Oh, the new stuff. Um, well, so far I think there's about 14, 15 songs written for the new album, Unleashed. Um, and I know every band says this, and it's a, you know, it's a, it's a stock answer that you know every band comes up with. But I, I really do, honestly, believe this that this is easily the finest material that you know myself and Tony have um, collaborated on. It's uh, I'm really proud of the stuff. Um, I mean, at the moment we're we're busy working on getting all the lyrics together and. You know, Tony's going to be coming over here to put bass lines down and we've got Francesco who's going to be putting the drums down in Italy and then all the files are coming back to my studio for mixing and producing. Um, it's just, uh, I mean, it, for me, it's just a damn good heavy metal album. It, it's really good. It's, it's, it's got no genre specifics to it. Um, it's just going straight down the line metal, as far as I'm concerned. And that, you know, that, that was the thing that with Empire was always going to be about. It was always going to be about just being a heavy metal band, you know, and, you know, keep away from all this, you know, black metal, death metal, this metal, that metal, whatever. I think the genre thing's gone far too far now. Uh, that's my personal opinion. Uh, you, you, seem, know, seems, uh, right. you seem quite eager, um, both you and Tony, to um emphasize that it doesn't pertain to any specific genre uh you it's just metal at the very most that's all right absolutely yep um that's one thing we said when we first put this band together that you know we we'll write whatever we feel is good um we've got a good working relationship together myself and Tony, so you know we, we can criticize each other no problem um uh, but so far, you know, I mean, there's been no criticisms between us of anything that uh, either of us have come up with. Um, and we decided straight away that, you know, we don't want, you know, obviously, you know, with Mantis, Venom, and, you know, people will think, that, you know, the black metal thing straight away. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, the, the black metal scene has moved on and evolved so much from what, you know, Venom first created. It's, it's a completely different animal now. Um, which is a good thing because that's evolution, you know, and it's kept it alive mm -hmm. for the last 30 something years. But we, we said, you know, if, if we want to write a song which is in a black metal vein or in a thrash metal vein or a doom metal or whatever, you know, all the, you've got to remember all these terminologies, you know, none of it existed in the early days, you know, when we first started. And I suppose we're partly to blame for all this um, yeah. genre type of thing. Um, but it just seems that every band that comes out these days, you know, every new band, they've got to be part of a genre, you know, they, 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 and if there isn't a genre for them, then they create their own, you know, and I think, I think it's, you know, I'm still old school at the end of the day, you know, I still go back to classic metal. Uh -huh. um, I think, I think the, the thing people forget is, you know, you know, I'm, I'm 54 year old now, so, you know, obviously I've got a, I've got a long history of music behind me. Mm -hmm. You know, and I mean that that stretches way back into the seventies. You know, into the into the early seventies. Absolutely. Um, so I mean, I was I was always into guitar driven music, and uh, I suppose my first favorite band as a kid uh, was Slade. Slade, um, okay. You know, yeah. I mean, you know, a good rock band, really, really good rock band. It was T Rex, which was obviously on, you know on a little bit of the softer side to Slade. Uh -huh. And everything just progressed and evolved from there for me. But it was always, you know, it always had to be guitar driven. Um, I, I, I just found sonically that appealed to me. Um, and I think that's what we're getting back to now is just good guitar driven music, whether it's heavy, you know, whether it's groovy, whatever it is. It's, you know, if it fits in the Empire frame, then it fits. If it doesn't, it'll, it, it'll work for something else. Uh, you mentioned um, Slade. Um, I wonder if that band was an influence in your first solo album, Winds of Change. Oh, for, for Winds of Change. Yes, yes. To be perfectly honest with, for, for, to be perfectly honest with you, Winds of Change for me, it was just a breath of fresh air. It was a chance to have some fun. Um, I mean, you know, it's well documented now. That, you know, all all the personality clashes within Denim and stuff like that. And it, it just became a more and more increasingly difficult band to be in. And the events of 1985, you know, things that happened in that year, mm -hmm. had very little to do with musical differences or anything like that. Um, 
And it was it was things that happened during the course of that year which shocked and disgusted me in, in certain quarters. Um, and after after announcing that I was leaving in 1986, you know, I, I thought you know that that was it for me with music. I thought you know that you know, if this is what being in a band you know becomes like. You know, then I thought, well, you know, I, I don't want any part of that. Uh, but it, you know, it wasn't music that was the enemy. It was you know, it was the personalities in the band. And then when I got the phone call from Neat Records asking what I was doing, and you know, uh, had I considered doing a solo album, which at that point I hadn't, um, I went down and I spoke with David Wood at Neat Records, and you know, we agreed, okay, then let, you know, let's do a solo album. And so it was the, it was at the instigation of Neat Records that you were encouraged to. Um, do a, your first solo album, right? What was that? Sorry, I just didn't catch that. Um, I said uh, it was at the instigation of Neat Records that you decided to do your first solo album, Wounds of Change, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It was, you know, it was Dave Woods at Neat Records basically just said, you know, if you would like to, there's, there's the opportunity to do a solo album. So I thought about it and then thought, yeah, why not? Um, so I proceeded to write for it, and I thought, you know, if if I'm going to do something, uh, you know, I've left a band. If I'm going to do something, I might as well do something completely different, you know. So, and I'm always like that. I've, I've got that side to me where, you know, the, there's things that I do that people won't expect. You know, uh -huh. I'm, not, I'm not, I'm not, you know, some narrow-minded, tunnel-vision, one-trick pony that needs to be under a, a banner. You know, it's so. I thought, you know, if you've got a white wall and you want to, you want to make a change to that wall, you want to paint it. You know, it's point of painting a different shade of white. You know, it's like yeah. let's make a complete change. So that that's where the whole winds of change thing came around. You know, and I've always been a fan of eighties rock music as well. So yeah. I thought, you know, why don't we just have some fun with this and just enjoy it? And it was a very, very enjoyable time. It was just bloody good fun at the end of the day. And one, one thing that it did bring to the focal front, I suppose, was it, it got a lot of good reviews. We did um, the Tommy Vance show for the BBC. We mm -hmm. went down and did the Headbangers Ball. We did a video which was on MTV rotation. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, some of the reviews that were coming out were great. And, you know, actually saying, my God, this guy can play guitar. <laughs> so it was, yeah, I mean, the songs, they're, they're very good, well-written songs. You mentioned the, um, you know, the personality clashes in, in Venom, but obviously it wasn't always like that. And I'd like to ask you what you remember of uh, your first meeting with Cronus, or how how you had met, and uh, how the band had started. What do you remember of that time? Right. Well, I'll, I'll give you this. I'll give you this in a condensed version. Okay. I'm actually writing a book about this at the moment. You are writing a book uh, about it. Yes, I've, I've been asked for a long time to write a book, and I've, all, I've always avoided it. Um, but it was a couple of years ago, um, I was in Japan, and I was speaking to some people, and you know, they were like, you really should write the book, you know, mm -hmm. and you know, tell the truth, basically. Yeah. Tell the truth of, of what's happened, because you know, what, what's being, being said in the press today, and what I read on the internet, is just, it's a complete load of horseshit. How myself and Kronos met was um, I was I was seeing this girl um, oh god way back in 1978 79 and um, she was from Wall's End uh, which is just outside of Newcastle mm -hmm. and a friend of mine lived in Walker which is a little suburb just outside of Wall's End and you know we used to go to this local rock club. Um, which Venom actually played. It, it was more like a little church hall, and it was like a youth centre on, on a Friday evening, and it was called the Met, which was short for the Methodist Church. Mm -hmm. And anyway, I, I met this girl there, we started seeing each other, and um, her best friend used to live in Wall's End as well, and so once a week, when this girl's parents used to go out for the evening, all of, our, all of us sort of young metalheads would go around to this girl's house and just hang out and listen to metal music and stuff. And one night when we went round, um, my girlfriend's best friend had a new boyfriend and he was sitting on the couch as I, as I walked in. And I was introduced to him and it was Conrad, who eventually became Kronos. 
and we just we just started talking. It was the first time I'd ever met the guy. Never seen him before in my life, and um, we had a mutual interest in music. I said that I had a band, and at that point, the guy that I actually started Venom with, a guy called Dave Rutherford, he was in the sort of proceeds of, of leaving the band because he wasn't really into what we were doing. Um, mm -hmm. So I was on the lookout for another rhythm guitarist. Now Conrad mentioned that he played guitar, um, and the thing that clinched it for me was that he was um, working on a, a scheme. Um, in back in those days, the, the the UK government used to put sort of young people into these um, work schemes called youth opportunity schemes, mm -hmm. and he got the the chance to go and work at a recording studio, which was Impulse Recording Studios in Wall's End, which obviously was Meat Records. Mm -hmm. So for me, that was a double-edged sword. It was, you know, he has a chance to get a rhythm guitarist for the band, and he works in a recording studio. Maybe we can get some studio time, because we couldn't afford studio. So I, I invited him to come along to a rehearsal on a, on a Saturday afternoon, which was in a church hall in the west end of Newcastle. Um, he came along and, you know, the offer was there for him to join the band. And it was shortly after that that our bass player that we had at the time, he left the band. Again, he wasn't really into what we were doing or what we wanted to do. Um, so Conrad took over bass. So that left the original Venom um, as a four piece of myself, Abaddon, Kronos and a vocalist called Clive Archer and that was the first lineup that went into Impulse Recording Studios to do the first demo and the way that Kronos became vocalist was I had wrote the song Live Like an Angel, Die Like a Devil and I asked him to sing it at a rehearsal one, one time and the idea was that Clive Archer was going to go off stage to do a costume change, because even at that point we were, you know, always thinking very theatrically, uh -huh. to do a costume change before coming back on to do the song Schizo. Um, and, you know, they say everything happens for a reason, and, you know, Conrad's vocals were good, um, Clive was a little bit uneasy in the band at that point as well, um, so eventually it obviously became the three piece that everybody knows but there is a rehearsal tape from 1979 from this church hall with Clive Archer singing Angel Dust Raised the Dead Red Light Fever and Buried Alive from as early as that so that's how early Buried Alive was written so a lot of the early material was written before Cronus joined the band um, but obviously it goes into more detail in the book